in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6, dot, dot, 9 through 10. All right, be sure to sit in the color row that matches your color row uh, for your grade as you guys are coming in. Go ahead and take a seat. So yesterday, on Monday, what did we talk about? Build. God created everything. Tuesday, what did we talk about? Your. We talk about how God leads his people. And today's word is? Kingdom. So we're going to pull phrase. Build your kingdom. So last off, we left how Israelites finally made it to Israel. And do you think they totally listened to God? No, oh, no, I'm sorry. Why do you think they didn't listen to God? Sin. Sin was still in their lives. So God had to send them leaders who could help them. So he sent judges. Now usually when you think of judge, you think of a guy with a gavel that's like, order, order in the courts. And he sent some people that were judges like that. So there was Deborah, she was a judge. And she ruled, she led people, and she helped people solve problems. And so there was Deborah. And then we had people like generals. Uh, you can go back to the same where you were with Miss Deborah. And we had a general, like uh, this guy was named Gideon. And he was a general, and he led military invasions, and he led God's people. Um, sometimes he listened to God, sometimes he didn't, but God used him to um, help lead his people. And then he had big warriors like Hulk, and he, people would come in, they'd do crazy feats, and so we had guys like Samson, and Samson would go and he'd lead people, and he'd go take over enemies, uh, he didn't always listen to God, but, you know, that's what they had, they had judges, and when they listened to God, they were good, and when they didn't, well, they were in trouble. Y'all say this with me, one, two, three, we want a king! You see, they didn't like their judges, they wanted to be like the other countries, because other countries, they had Kings. They had people, they were like, our king has the coolest ground, our king has the coolest castle. They wanted to be like other kings, other lands that had kings. And so they wanted a king. But who was supposed to be their king? God. Who? God! But they didn't listen. So God gave them a king. He said, hey, they're not going to be perfect. They're going to be tough on you. It's not always going to be good. But he did give them a king. He gave them a king named Saul. Where's Saul? And Saul was tall and he was powerful, uh, but he was also prideful. And so he wasn't a perfect king. And so he fell to sin, and Saul wasn't the right king. Next up, God chose another guy, a guy named David. And David was a shepherd, and he loved God. He put God first, and that was awesome. God finally had a person who could lead his people closer to him. But then came sin. David's heart got led astray by sin, and he turned away from God as well. You see, Saul and David couldn't be perfect, and they didn't know what to happen, and so they didn't know who should be king. So all these different people fought over who should be king, and the kingdom was split in half. It was like a civil war, except not very civil, and so they had all these different people who thought, I should be king, or I should be king, and they had fights, and the land split in half, and it was pretty bad, and, and people would come in, and they invade, and they went in, and they took over the land of Israel, and it was real bad. You see, this wasn't how God wanted it to be. This wasn't how he wanted people to live. So what happened next is they got taken to be slaves again. It seems like they just got out of Egypt. But no, another country came in, took them away, and they had to be slaves, so they had to go live in another country. You see, that's where we hear about stories like Esther and Daniel. And they had to go far, far away from Israel. And once again, they were slaves. You know, sin is like slavery. It wraps us up and doesn't let us do what we want to do. You see, or what's right even. So they were slaves in another land. So what was going to happen next? You see, God was telling people to reverse. Y'all say that with me? Reverse. You see, he wanted them to turn from their sin and go back to God again. Say that with me? Turn from your sin and go back to God again. And so he sent people like judges, and they brought messages to the people. And these judges would tell them, listen to God. He's got a plan. You need to honor him first. He's going to make things good. He's in control. Sometimes they listened. Sometimes they didn't. You see, they were wanting a good king. They wanted a king that they could touch and feel and see. They wanted a, a nice, attractive king to you know, point and say, he's our king. But God, you know, we can't always see God. We can't always understand God, but God 
gives us what, he, what we need, doesn't he? He gives us exactly what we need. He doesn't always give us what we want. Have you ever prayed to God and asked for something and you didn't get it? You know what? Sometimes that's like when a pa- you ask your parents, hey, can I have candy for breakfast? And they're like, uh, no. <laughs> because that wouldn't be good. And sometimes God doesn't give us the things that we want because he knows it's not good for us. Um, you see, God gives us what we need. What's this? Bread. bread. He gives us our daily bread. He gives us exactly what we need to sustain us. You can just smell this fresh bread. That is so nice. Bread. You see, yeah, God gives us exactly yeah. what we need. He gives us more than bread as well. For all you gluten-free people, He gives us exactly <laughs> what we need. He gives us forgiveness. He gives us forgiveness. You see, because of our sin, it's like we owe Him a debt. It's like if I borrowed money from one of you guys, and then you were like, hey, you owe me $500. That's my debt, and I can't pay it. And so because of that, I would deserve to maybe go to jail. But because God loves us, he wants to forgive our debts. He wants to forgive our sin. And if we go to him and ask for forgiveness, will he forgive us? Yeah. Because he is a good king. He wants us to be free from our sin. You see, finally, the Israelites were free. They were able to go back home. And so they were freed, and they were so happy, but something had changed. You see, they were free, but there was a new person in charge. And then the Persians came and took over, and then the Greeks took over, and then Rome. You see, because they hadn't let God be their king, they had other people ruling over them. People that didn't love God, people that didn't know God. So fortunately, the prophets once again spoke, and the promise, a king was coming. Remember that song we sang? The king is coming. Say it with me. The king is coming. So they held on with hope for that king that would come. Who's that king? Does anybody know? Jesus. Jesus was coming. You see, a lot of us, we've been like kids when we run away from our parents. We don't want always what God wants, and so we run away. But God loves us, and he wants us to be with him again. And you see, God loves us so much that He will forgive our sin when we go to Him and ask for forgiveness. Lots of times we put too many people on the throne of our hearts. We think that people are going to solve our problems, that all our government leaders will solve all our problems. And you know, they should help us, they should serve us, and we should respect them. But what happens when all of us try to fight for the throne, when other people fight for the throne of our lives? Do you think a throne is meant for multiple people to sit on? Yes, you think so? <laughs> no, it's not. Look at that. I mean, they fit kind of, but I don't think they'd be able to rule very neatly if everyone's sitting on there. You see, we should respect our leaders, but we need to let God be the king of our hearts. God has a royal invitation for all of you guys, for you guys to join his kingdom and to be part of his royal family. He is our father, and he wants us to be his prince and princesses. You know, say, I am a prince. All the boys, I am a prince. But that's not because we are good enough. We can't earn that. You see, it's because God has the gift to invite us. Because of his forgiveness, because of his love. And we want to be like the king. We want to give to others and help others. We want to share our daily bread. That's what we're doing with our project, right? To share and help others. We need to forgive others. There might be someone that you need to forgive today. That you need to think about forgiving. So you can be like God, your father. So you guys, think about how can you let God be the king of your hearts? Um, we want God to be like our parents and to lead us through our lives. Sometimes, I like this comic, it looks like the world is all scary and it's telling us to be afraid. But remember, BBS a couple years ago, what was it? Do not... Fear. Or fear not. Fear not. Do not fear, fear not. Because we don't want to be afraid. We want to be able to trust God. Fear, fear. God is in control. Like we sing, the world is covered with sin. But is God still king? Yes. Yeah, he is. So we can trust him. We know that he loves us. He takes care of us. And we can trust him and pray to him. And he will watch over us. So I want you guys to remember, I am invited to join God's royal family. Remember, he loves you and he's got a good plan. So we're going to find out more as we go forward. I want you guys to go ahead and go to your small groups. Take the towels that you have with you now. Anything that you brought and take it with you to your small